Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I am Carl Grossman. The subject, lead poisoning, and with us is Dr. Evelyn Morrison. She's a specialist, an expert on lead poisoning. Dr. Morse, here's a, a government report. It's based on a National Institutes of Health survey, which says that almost a million U.S. children have what uh, the U.S. government considers a high amount of lead in their systems, a level of concern. Now, why, Dr. Morse, is, is lead poisoning still, as a former Surgeon General said, the number one children's illness, children's malady in the United States? And when people think of, of lead and lead poisoning, they, well, gasoline doesn't have lead in it anymore, and they've taken lead out of paint. I mean, like, what has been going on? Well, you're right. Um, there are probably almost a million children in the country who have uh, levels of lead in their blood that are considered elevated. Um, that, that may even be an underestimate. And it's also true that we've had very good regulations, as you've indicated, that have reduced the levels of lead, the use of lead in gasoline. We don't use lead in gasoline any longer in this country. You cannot get it at a pump anywhere and also uh, have phased lead out of paint. Also, even tin cans are with, are, may not be soldered with lead. So all of that is right, but yes, you're right as well that lead is still a problem. The reason is that we understand now, as we had not earlier, that much, much lower levels of lead are hazardous, harmful to children to adults to some extent um, than had ever been understood. Far lower levels um, are recognized as being um, deleterious to the health of children. And what used to be considered harmful? Well, in I have a little chart here that I'll try to um, illustrate with. Into the 70s, 1970, and right into the 70s, pediatricians didn't fuss or worry if children's blood lead levels at least stayed below 40. By 1975, that level was dropped to 30 because it was understood that 40 was just too toxic. Then it was dropped to 25 in 1985. And finally, in 1991, and up until the present, the level of concern is 10 micrograms per deciliter. Micrograms per deciliter is a measure, a unit of measurement. A microgram is about one three hundred thousandth of an ounce. Deciliter is a hundredth of a, um, I'm sorry, a tenth of a liter. That level, excuse me, is now considered the level of concern. And, and what are the health effects at all those various levels from lead? I have another table. Um, this one lets me show you quickly that at very high levels, as high as 150 and much higher ones have actually been recorded, a death can occur. Below that there can be, uh, there used to be in olden days uh, children who convulsed or became comatose as a result of high lead levels. And th that's an indication of encephalopathy or um, damage to the brain and nephropathy of damage to kidneys. Anemia is a very characteristic uh, symptom of lead poisoning. Children could have colic. And the reason that uh, I'm going to put this down because I want to say that the reason that um, lead is so toxic is that it interferes with, it interacts with a whole range of essential enzymes that are critical to the physiologic function of ourselves as organisms, other organisms as well. And that kind of wide-ranging enzymatic um, dysfunction causes a whole wide range of, of pathologies. And as we get to the lower, lower levels, down to as low as 10, the um, effects are not so visible. You don't see a little child who's sick or convulsing or having frank colic. But we know on the basis of population studies, and I really have to emphasize this, that these are population studies, that there are interferences with cognitive development, how children learn, how they think, and with uh, physical growth and development. 
emotional development as well. But this is based on studies in which, for example, you could take a group of children, all of whom have quite low lead levels, five, six, seven. Another group of children with higher lead levels, above 10, 15 to 20, let's say. And the differences in their average um, uh, gradings or, or ratings in IQ, in reading ability, in grade um, level functioning, in how they get along with their peers or within their families. All of these differences, growth differences as well, postural differences, um, are very clear. And these studies have been done in many countries. They've been repeated over and over again in many different ways. And in fact, it isn't only blood. I'm, I've been saying 10 micrograms of deciliter in blood Per, by 10 micrograms per deciliter of blood, but also if you measure um, levels of lead in teeth, these graphs show that as the levels go up, in this case, the children's reading disab disabilities increase, or in this graph, if the levels go up, more of the children, significantly more, have failed to complete high school. Similarly, this is teeth. Similarly, if you just do hair scalp lead um, as the levels go up. Once again, the percentage of children with high attention deficits increases. And also, this is true of bone. There's been a recent study that has shown that if you can measure the levels of lead in bone and uh, rank them, then you, and if teachers and parents rank the children with respect to aggression or antisocial behavior or whatever, the, there is a correlation. We're careful not to say that it's the cause, but the correlation is unquestioned. Dr. Morris, what's the world situation in terms of lead, and what are the obstacles to a, to a global phase-out on the use of this poison? Worldwide, lead poisoning is much more of a problem than it is in our country. The, there are 185 nation, states, who are members of the United Nations, of that 185, should I let you guess how many have completely phased out leaded gasoline? I'll tell you, 14 nations so far, I'm sorry, as of a few weeks, as of early this year, 16 nations have completely phased out leaded gasoline. That leaves us with 169 who still use lead in their gasoline at different levels. Many of them are uh, have set goals for themselves of ridding their countries of all leaded gasoline by the year 2001 and so on. But the poorest countries are the ones that are still using it. And I want to make a point about the value of this. It's, it's a global campaign. I'm going to give it its formal name, Global Campaign to Phase Out Leaded Gasoline, conducted by Natural Resources Defense Council, the Alliance to End childhood lead poisoning, and a number of non-governmental organizations, a campaign which is being cooperated with quite wonderfully well by international organizations like the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in Europe, Organization of American States in our hemisphere, and um, many others, the United Nations, um, other initiatives that are important. There is a National Information Lead Center in Washington, and its number is 800 L E A D F Y I, lead for your information. And there's another number that will be shown. And they're, they're right on the board. Now, thank you so much, Dr. Evelyn Morse, for uh, decades of, of, of struggle against lead poisoning. Thank you for watching Enviro Close Up. I'm Carl Grossman. Mm -hmm.